Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Troy and today we're taking the Ferrari 430 down our rally course. Yes, uh, a very unusual car to be taking down the rally course. Um, but I actually saw a video of somebody rallying a Ferrari 430 and it got me thinking. We have the 430 in Horizon 5. We have a rally series on this channel. So why not take the 430 down the rally course and see how we do. So um, we haven't really had many vehicles like this go down the course so far. Probably the closest vehicle we've had to this is the DeLorean. Uh, the DeLorean was rear-engined, was rear-wheel drive. Um, I believe that had a Viper V10 in it. The Ferrari here is rear-engined, rear-wheel drive. It has a 6.3 litre V12 um, as standard. It's already up in S1 class. Uh, 810 PI, I believe. Um, so we won't need to do many upgrades to this thing uh, to build it into a rally car. You can fit this thing on off-road springs and dampers, believe it or not. Um, so I'm curious to see how this thing will perform. So let's go ahead and upgrade the thing. Um, like I said, probably the closest vehicle we've had to this is the DeLorean. So I think that is going to be like our benchmark. Uh, DeLorean did a 2 16 um it is currently sat in 13th place just behind the audi quattro um so yeah let's see what we can do with the ferrari here um so like i said standard we've got the 6.4 liter uh, 6.3 liter excuse me v12 um we can go ahead and put in a 5.2 v10 uh, but we're not going to do that if you've seen, if you haven't seen any of these episodes before, all the vehicles are upgraded to S1 class, providing they can get into S1 class, they'll keep their stock engine. Um, if it needs more PI, then we will um, think about an engine swap. The Ferrari will not be needing an engine swap. All the vehicles will keep their stock drivetrain. So the Ferrari is rear-wheel drive standard. We can swap it to all-wheel drive, uh, but we're not going to do that today as per the rules of the series and the same for aspiration uh, we'll keep the stock aspiration unless we need the pi um, so we've got a few um, bumper upgrades now visual parts don't usually affect it too much on the rally course we're not really going over about 120 miles an hour so aero parts um, are not as much of a necessity as if it was on tarmac and in this case, they're just going to make the vehicle lower. So we want the ground clearance. So we're not going to go for that. We can put on a horrible looking Forza rear wing, which we're not going to bother with either. So yes, we're just going to leave the car standard. All the vehicles are fitted with the off-road tire compound. If you played Horizon 4, then you may know it as the rally tire compound. Um, and you may be asking, why are we not going for the off-road race tyre compound? Because not all of the vehicles have that as an option. Um, so we're going with the rally tyre compound. So we'll fit that. Um, we'll fit the biggest tyres we can. 265s in the front. Hopefully we can get some bigger in the rear. 335s in the rear. Obviously it is rear wheel drive. Um, so that is a good thing. Um, fairly big tyres to be honest on something like this muscle cars get a lot bigger tyres but there we go um, we will go ahead and upgrade the clutch we'll put in a race transmission we'll just go for the 6 speed that will allow me to tune the gears um, we will also go for a rally differential believe it or not we can fit that in the Ferrari like I said we can fit this thing on off-road springs and dampers which is just amazing. It does lift the vehicle very slightly. Um, it's going to let me tune the vehicle. We're not going to bother with anti-roll bars. We will go ahead and do a bit of weight reduction though. £3,000 standard. So it's actually quite a heavy vehicle. But we have got a V12 I guess. So that will add quite a lot of weight. Um, but we can bring that down to £2,800. So we're just over a tonne. 
about a ton and a half. Uh, so not too bad. Engine upgrades. We're probably not going to go for too many engine upgrades. Um, because rear wheel drive, it's weird. You actually want the least horsepower you can get away with. Because um, it will just spin the tyres on the dirt. So we try not to upgrade the two wheel drive vehicles in terms of power too much. So I'm probably just going to go for like stage one of each sort of engine upgrade here. Um, if we can keep it sort of under 600 horsepower, that would be fantastic. Uh, 560. Um, actually, there's not that many engine upgrades in this thing anyway. So we'll just go ahead and slap everything on, I think. Um, there was one up here, intake, and we did that. There we go, we'll go ahead and just put max on everything, and we're still under 600 horsepower, so that's not too bad. Uh, 4.8 cubic, uh, sorry, 4.8 uh, litre engine. Uh, I've been uh, watching too many American car programs, I was going to say cubic inch. Uh, yeah, we keep the standard engine in there, we're still rear wheel drive. I'm going to go ahead and paint and tune the Ferrari now and i will meet you guys over at the rally course okay here we go in the first attempt for the ferrari quite a lot of wheel spin this is probably going to be the floatiest ferrari i have ever driven in this game it is uh, wandering around the road a little bit it's uh, actually getting thrown off by the bump horribly down the straight to be expected it is a low slung supercar um, but it's actually not wheel spinning as much as i thought it might obviously we've got that big heavy v12 over the rear axle and uh, we've got uh, rear wheel drive gets slowed down quite badly in the water splash that is the only downside of the low slung sort of sports cars and supercars not sure if this thing is classed as a supercar or a sports car I'm just going to call it a Ferrari, and that is what it is. A um, little bit of oversteer there. The third and fourth gears are sort of very close together, and I can't really tell at the moment which one I want to be in. It's horrible down the bumps on that section there. Again, that is the uh, lowness of the vehicle not working out so well for us. But we've got this lovely Pirelli livery on the car that uh, makes it look more like a rally car at least, or at least like a race car. we we'll get slowed down for this corner here. It's actually um, handling the dirt a lot better than I thought it would. It seems to have quite a lot of grip. It just doesn't like the bumps very much. Uh, cresting the hill at 110, that's not too bad. Just going to have a little bit of a lift because it's getting very unsettled on the bumps. All of the sort of going off the track is not so much me. Um, it is just the car sort of bouncing. And it's a little bit unsettling from a driving point of view because you can't really predict what the vehicle's gonna do. Even on this section here, some of these littler bumps, it's just getting thrown around quite a lot. And you can't really predict whether it's going to go left or right. So I'm doing my best to try and counter steer it. But obviously when you can't predict it, you don't know where it's going to go. Down the hill and across the line. We cross the line with a 218.906. That is going to put the vehicle in uh, 17th place actually behind the Ford GT70 and the Lancia 037, both rear-wheel drive, rear-engined vehicles as well. Um, we're not actually too far off the DeLorean's time, uh, only about three seconds behind the DeLorean, which is probably our benchmark for this vehicle. Um, I sort of got more used to the vehicle towards the end of the run there um, the bumps are a little bit precarious so i'm going to have to be careful with that but we've got another couple of attempts so let's see what we can do okay here we go for attempt number two in the ferrari let's see what we can do we we'll get off the line nicely it does actually accelerate fairly well on the tarmac considering we have got off-road tires on this thing 
Let's see what we do down the straight. A little bit of bobbling around, but much, much more controlled than the previous run. We've got a little bit of lift off oversteer coming into the first corner there. Now, coming up to the water splashes, keep to the right hand side of both water splashes. You will actually see on this one how the vehicle tips to the left very slightly. The right hand side is shallower. Obviously, that is the downside of the Ferrari. It is very low to the ground and it doesn't have a lot of weight. The uh, Rivian that we took in last week's episode had so much weight and so much more ground clearance, it just got through the water splash with ease. Now, coming up to the straight section up the hill here, this is where the vehicle seemed to bobble around a little bit in the last episode, or in the last run, excuse me. We're actually having to uh, let off the throttle a little bit just to try and keep the vehicle under control. I think we want third coming into the hairpin here. That was lovely through there, nice and controlled. A little bit on the rev limiter. I don't know if we've got any air on the jump. I don't think so. Possibly a couple of wheels off. Now up the hill here. This is where the vehicle struggles a little bit. Um, it is slightly underpowered compared to the Rivian last episode. Had about twice the horsepower and it had two more wheels driving. But it did have a lot more weight. That is what the Ferrari has going for it. It is quite a light vehicle. Uh, coming into this corner here, I'm having a little break, but it is actually quite controlled through there. I reckon we could maybe get away with taking that corner flat. Now through this section, I don't know whether we want fourth or fifth. The car is a little bit undecided. Fourth is quite high revs. That can cause a bit of wheel spin. Now, let's see what we can do down the hill. Are we going to improve from our previous run? Yes, we do. And I believe we have beaten the DeLorean's time. It's going to be very, very close. 2.15.903 does beat the DeLorean's time. And we actually... Uh, oh, sorry. We don't actually beat the Audi Quattro's time. Uh, we're a couple of tenths of a second behind the Audi Quattro in 12th position. But we have beaten our benchmark, which was the DeLorean. Now, the Audi Quattro from the very, very first episode... Uh, was all-wheel drive a ferrari here is rear-wheel drive so let's see if we can actually beat an all-wheel drive well we have already beaten an all-wheel drive vehicle the jaguar i-pace was all-wheel drive um, so let's see if we can beat the audi quattro which is obviously a proper rally car okay here we go attempt number three in the ferrari Let's see how we can do. I'm going to knock it straight up into second on the tarmac. I'll hopefully uh, negate a bit of wheel spin. Now, this first section down here is very, very bumpy. Uh, just don't put any kind of steering inputs in down there. And you can keep it in a straight line. It does sort of seesaw backwards and forwards a little bit. But that is okay. Now, keep to the right-hand side of the water splashes. I'm going to keep right over on this one because it is a lot shallower, as you can see there. We actually get through the water splashes much, much better that time. Now, coming up to this corner here, I'm just going to have a little lift off because we have been sliding a little bit through that corner. And coming up to the left-hander here, we have a little bit of uh, lift off oversteer, but that was lovely and controlled. Now, this is where we struggle up the hill on the bumps. So I'm just going to take it nice and slow, we'll brake early, once the wheels are in the air we have no braking power. We're coming up to the hairpin, we'll just coast through here, we get a little bit of oversteer but nothing terrible and then back on the power as soon as we get out the corner. We don't get any air time on the jump there, some vehicles do, Ferrari is not actually going fast enough to get air time down there. Now up the hill here is where we also struggle slightly. Uh, we're cresting at 115 miles an hour, but 600 horsepower is not quite enough up there. When you consider that some of the vehicles we've been having have a thousand horsepower, uh, we're almost half of what those vehicles are running. A little bit wide on that corner there, we brushed the fence, uh, but that might have actually helped us slightly 
get slowed down because the bumps are a little bit of a pain in this vehicle. We get a big, big slide through that corner and still uncontrolled out of the exit. That is going to cost us quite a bit of time. We're sliding everywhere as we come down the hill. Are we going to beat the time? Unfortunately not. We're actually slower than our previous attempt to 16.303. Uh, so that is going to put the Audi Quattro just behind, uh, sorry, going to put the Ferrari just behind the Audi Quattro in 13th place. But let's go to the leaderboard and see actually how it compares. And there we have it. That will be the time for the Ferrari 430, a 215.903. The second run was actually our fastest there. Uh, third run was going very very well at the start it got slowed down nicely we got through the water splashes a lot better but towards the end there the vehicle was bobbling around a bit we got a little bit uncontrollable on the last couple of corners and that did cost us those valuable tenths of a second um, so sadly we did not beat the audi quattro we did beat an all-wheel drive vehicle the jaguar i-pace down in 15th place and our benchmark, the DeLorean, which is sort of what we were comparing the vehicle to, we did beat the DeLorean, which was fantastic. So yes, 215.903 for the Ferrari. My thoughts on the Ferrari, actually much, much better than I thought it was going to be. When you take a supercar off-road, you expect it to bounce around quite a lot, be very uncontrollably uh, very uncontrollable sorry and sort of get thrown around a lot which in parts the vehicle did on the uh, straight going up the hill it was very very bouncy and on the first sort of opening straight uh, you saw that as well um, but actually it got through the corners very very nicely it had a lot of grip I think having that big v12 over the rear axle did help uh, with that quite a lot um, the vehicle was just generally better than I thought it was going to be. If you have a suggestion for what vehicle you'd like to see us run in the next episode, then please drop it down in the comments. If you're new, also don't forget to subscribe. We do one of these rally series every Saturday at 7pm, so make sure to tune in next week to see what we take down the course. But thanks so much for watching. Hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you next time.